Tschüss. Okay. <lacht> <lacht> ich mal den Treff hier, dann man nämlich ja, äh, schön verteilt. So, we have a next interview part in the night hacking here at Developer Week. Um, with me now are Thomas Andres, uh, Martin Furch, and Manuel Mayer. And as well, um, what what's his name? No. Uh, yeah, this is uh, the now robot. Uh. Okay, one moment. You have to try it again. Yeah. Hello, I'm TNG now. I can't connect to the network. <laughs> okay, yeah, so this is the now robot, and uh, he's from SoftBank Robotics, formerly uh, um, it was Aldebaran Robotics from France, and now it's Japan, Japanese. Yeah, that's, that's quite, quite interesting. So what you actually want, we want to, I want to talk about a bit of, of robotics, but also about machine learning. And machine learning is quite, uh, I would say, not necessarily a new topic. Some of the basics that is in between is something that is uh, 20 years old, something like that. But nevertheless, why, why is machine learning getting so much interest as of now? What do you think? Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, the, the problem is that it's really old topic. So the foundations were like laid out in the 60s, <laughs> Most of the algorithms were there in the 80s, but now it's gaining track. And that's a very interesting topic because it was always evolving throughout time. And uh, now with the, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's a little bit, it has to do with the new deep learning algorithms that gain some tractions that are somehow also a bit of a hype, I think, because there are other techniques that are also very... Mm, promising in this field but nowadays everybody's concentrating on these deep neural networks well, that's my opinion i think an important point is that uh, today we are in the time of the cloud and machine learning comes very close to every developer so you don't have to be a data scientist or a machine learning specialist and you can just write a couple of lines of code and use machine learning structures that have been built in the last 20 years and so the, the audience of people who can benefit from machine learning has become huge. And I think this is a, that's, a, that's why it's such a big topic at the moment. By the way, the same is true for robotics. So um, as a computer scientist, uh, normally you don't have to uh, much uh, to do with such uh, robotics things. Uh, this is uh, its own field of study. But uh, the now robot, for example, um, it uh, has uh, programming interfaces which are so easy to use so that I'm, as a plain uh, computer scientist, I'm able to co uh, control this robot with a few lines of code and uh, the same happens when it, when it comes to image processing. So um, there are libraries existing, OpenCV and whatever, with object recognition. You can do so many things within a few minutes. It's amazing. And uh, by the way, uh, this now robot uh, is used in education, for example, so that children uh, can program this robot. Yeah, so um, they are using the now that they get very, very early in touch with programming. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of image recognition, although there has been a little bit of a stagnation uh, with uh, Java standards in the Java community process, but the one that is very likely to be the next JSR uh, is not on the Java EE side, but uh, somebody has already proposed a JSR for image recognition as well. So there should be a, a Java standard for that as well, sitting on top of various different technologies, so you can program against it from... A Java layer. Um, we have um, heard about image recognition now and a bit of robotics, but what actually are the, the fields where machine learning or similar algorithms has 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 impact? And um, so, 
Traditionally, we have image recognition, of course, where you can just uh, specify or segment images or just uh, detect things within the images. These are problems that are pretty well known at the moment, I would say. So uh, you have standard algorithms for that, and you have also the the field of yeah the where the recurrent networks come in where you, you talk about natural language processing and so on and so on but there are new fields emerging that i find very interesting and this is deep learning for code so it's not really natural language processing because code has a different structure than the real languages and it's uh, not just the context that matters so not just the small context around the words but also the yeah, larger picture a little bit. And these also need totally different um, yeah, ways of doing uh, machine learning. Yeah, I come back to the first point I mentioned before because I'm, as I am a Microsoft developer, and for Microsoft, the intelligent cloud is the thing of the year 2017. Um, I myself get the ability to give benefit to my customers even though I don't know how this stuff really works in every detail. I can just use the, the machine learning templates that are available to me and give the customer more value from his data and can do it in almost no time. Do you have some, some examples that you did, actually? Typical examples are stuff like um, optimizing selling processes, like uh, proposing... Um, items to the customer that he might buy, which can be handled in a couple of lines of code and a couple of minutes uh, implementation time today. Um, but also, um, for for example, I was pretty amazed when I tried the, the cognitive services. So uh, that was a really cool thing to see that um, if I pass in a picture of someone, then it recognizes the age of the person, it recognizes that it is a male, it, uh, a male person, and um, a few other uh, things. And this comes out of the box just by passing in the picture. And yeah, so there are lots of other examples, but cognitive services is really um, one of the best examples that you can currently use. Um, when I look at, at robotics, it's just my ideas when I, 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 I think that the machines would be trained somehow, like humans are trained if they want to learn something new, new behavior, new movements, something like that. I, I think, or I would assume that that kind of machine learning or, or neural network stuff would apply in robotics as well. Is that, is that okay? Is that clear? Is that true? Actually, this is true. Um, there is um, a robot existing or a, a simulation for a robot. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot the name. I'm sorry for that. But um, there are, there, they are using a simulation process where uh, the robot learns to walk. And so it, it needs uh, uh, hours, days or months. And uh, the first steps, they look really how to say, <laughs> um, fucked up. <laughs> and um, um, But uh, with the, the iteration process, with uh, all those uh, um, uh, techniques uh, when it comes to machine learning, deep learning and so on, um, the robot actually learns to walk. Do you know the name? Uh, I, forgot it. I have to Google that. <laughs> the name of this project. It was really awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. It's really cute. It's really cute if you see the robot falling down, getting up again, trying again, and uh, after two or three days or weeks or something like that, it can really walk. Actually, it's like like a baby is trying to walk. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember there was that. Uh, Columbo episode where the ro one robot would actually teach the other robots uh, to do something. Uh, is something like that also happening in robotics? That you have robots that teach other robots? So that's something I didn't 
not at the moment. So I, I don't I don't really know if there are uh, things like that out there, but um, uh, it, it it is of course possible by just uh, observing other how other things work uh, to yeah do the same things and try to um, to, to recognize what one robot is doing. It, it is definitely possible, but I don't know about any example in that field at the moment. Actually, I had, uh, found a project uh, just by Googling it right now, and so the project was actually it was Darwin. So there is a, a article on NVIDIA available, and then you can learn something about that, how the this uh, yeah robot learns how to walk. I assume we, we can then include the link in the description when we yeah. publish the stuff. Um, when people are thinking what was possible, for example, with the with the compute programs that actually a couple of years ago they won against against humans in chess, then a few later Go, which is much more complex, uh, human beings were beaten as well. So it. It could be not that long that machines were basically more intelligent than humans. Is, is that a, a horror scenario or is that good? What do you think? <laughs> it depends on, uh, if you are a fan of the Terminator movie, I don't know. <laughs> I, I like the movies basically, but I'm not sure if I want to have the same in reality. <laughs> uh, uh. You have to think about these are very special uh, problems. So uh, general knowledge is very much, very more, much more complex than than just solving something like Go or chess or, or things like that. So you really have to comprehend the world you are living in, you are walking in, and not just see okay, this is a table, this is not. Uh, but you really have to. Uh, learn how to interact with things, how to know from context where uh, what to do next, and also, yeah, sounds stupid, but get some consciousness in the end. But it's uh, there's a long way from just these very very special problems to uh, generalized uh, knowledge, and it takes a few more billion neurons more than we currently can train. Yeah, um, I would say the same, Thomas. Uh, you're totally right. So uh, uh, playing chess against the human. So chess, it's a, you could say it's a mathematical problem. You can solve it with uh, CPU power, yeah, and uh, with hundreds of processors and enough time. And uh, but uh, what about uh, to um, you? You walk around, uh, maybe um, um, a, ro a soldier robot, for example, yeah, uh, and he has to DIY, uh, make a decision. Is is this a um, a friend uh, or an enemy, yeah? How, how to make a decision? Um, let's say he's uh, wearing the same uniform. How can you identify if this is an enemy or not? So um, for this you need much more AI. Yeah, I've also worked in a project of in the automotive sector and there, similar to, for example, self-driving cars uh, is a very big hype in that area where some of the challenges are also that, for example, if uh, a car uh, would risk hitting some object, uh, would the car rather try to avoid that or take a detour and maybe hit another car or, or even a person? So th those are... Uh, also, decision processes where it sometimes uh, is a decision between life and death or life for the passengers inside the car uh, as opposed to somebody on the street. Yeah. So that, that could be a frightening scenario. Yeah, that, yeah you're right. Um, but um, in general, although I would love to see uh, Skynet evolving, but um, yeah, or maybe not, but uh, it will be tens of years and uh, or even hundreds of years until we are really, really there. Um, now we have standing our colleague here. Um, I also see on, on, on his back. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. 
Okay. Not so communicative, I would say. No, he's just looking around. Oh, uh, okay. He's just ignoring you. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Um, which, which possibly the audience is not is not seeing is that on his back there is a, is a Raspberry Pi attached or something. I think it's a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Can you tell yeah. us a bit a bit more what he did? I think it's also the topic of, of of your talk that is I think tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. So uh, this is part of our talk here, and uh, we are having we have two cameras here, which are attached to the robot using 3D printed glasses, and these two cameras film the environment. The uh, the pictures are streamed into the Raspberry Pi, uh, which is uh, the backpack of the robot. And uh, they are then streamed into a computer where you can see them in an Oculus Rift. So this is noth has nothing to do with AI at all because uh, we are using telepresence robotics there. So you, the robot does exactly what you are doing. But that's uh, maybe what, just one of the edge cases of a broader field where you can say, okay, on the one field we have the totally auton autonomous systems that can... Uh, execute actions on their own, like a Mars rover or uh, something like that. And on the other hand, we have telepresence systems that do exactly what we want them to do. So, so a bit like a like a drone that's piloted from I don't know here in Germany, uh, but the drone is actually flying in Africa or Asia. Yeah, something like that, right. So our idea was uh, we wanted to make some rapid prototyping with uh, a humanoid robot, like the now is. And uh, what we are doing is to control this now robot with gesture control. So we actually we have th 3D cameras like Intel RealSense and Microsoft Kinect. And uh, just with moving our arms and everything, uh, we can control this robot. Yeah? And you, you just can place this robot in Australia and we can uh, make it move from here. Yeah? And we actually can see everything from the uh, point of view of the robot and it's directly streamed into our Oculus Rift, so we see everything in 3D. So this was what we wanted to do, and why? Yeah, because um, there are some telepresence uh, robotics applications out there uh, uh, where this could be useful, uh, especially if you don't just use such a small robot, but a huge one. So uh, let's imagine what uh, you, you could send a robot into a, um, a power plant where is, uh, something bad happened, yeah? And then you could, uh, from, from a safe place, as a human, you could uh, control this robot into the power plant uh, and to solve some uh, tasks and some problems, for example. Uh, the talk is tomorrow, is, I think, 5 p.m., right? Yeah. Um, an interesting topic here is uh, some area where we could really use some machine learning because at the moment, if you're trying to walk, it just uh, plays some macro. So it just says, okay, put this, uh, the, uh, the left foot in front of the right foot and then the other one around. If you just try to move your foot in an arbitrary way, it w won't do anything. We did this by purpose because the robot will, would fall down eventually. And if you have some learning network, then it could um, yeah, learn how to stay stable even if you are just standing on one foot. So again, a very specialized process, but uh, this is something that machine lear learning can really do. Um, Manuel, you also have a talk, or it's already over. Uh, no, it's coming tomorrow morning. For anyone who's interested, I will speak about the cognitive services from the Azure Cloud that Thomas mentioned. And uh, the talk is called Intelligence as a Service. Let's build the applications of tomorrow. And I will show you how we can use cognitive services to build the stuff we couldn't build a couple of years ago. And show you one example that can really change a person's life. And it's on my phone. But I will only show it tomorrow. <laughs> so I would say, summing up, we have two incredibly interesting talks tomorrow. Not to mention the ones already mentioned before in the, in the first, in the previous sessions. But uh, thank you very much that you were here. It was very interesting. Thank you now. And uh, have a nice evening. Thank you.